is really critical to us. And what's also critical to us is understanding the context of the cities themselves. How, what are the characteristics that define a city? How do those cities differ from each other? And how can we imagine a system of systems <coughs> within the different contexts um, that we see around the world? The city of Albany, the city of Tokyo, they're quite different, right? And how are those differences uh, important uh, to the work that cities are trying to do? Uh, how are those differences important to um, the consultants who are trying to work with the cities, um, to the international development organizations that are making recommendations to cities, that cities themselves are looking to for guidance. And so the research community, I think, has a tremendous opportunity to work closely with each other, uh, communities of, of academics around the world who know their own context, but also know, um, have particular research traditions and relationships with these international development organizations, funders, corporate community. So we see a potential network uh, of, knowledge, uh, of knowledge creation and also knowledge sharing that's gonna be really critical as the world transitions into this urban context. And so we like this fun way, so we go from places like Rio and Delhi and Mexico City as examples of cities, but then we also have to pay attention to places like you know, Hume Puratia, uh, which has a population of 23 people, the smallest city in the world. The smallest city in the world. So they, I don't know if they have a lot of digital communication or e-participation strategies in Hume, right? My joke is always that the mayor sticks he, her head out the window and yells and says, you know, I'm gonna be at the town hall in a half an hour. Anybody got any issues, come on down, right? Or maybe the people who do have issues just open their window and yell, right? <laughs> And the mayor hears it. So this is, you know, the, the, the range of, uh, of diversity, the nature of the, of, the, of the conditions that every city around the world is facing is, 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 a, is a really, um, so I'll say this as, a, as, a, as an academic, it's a wonderfully complex and robust problem. How do we understand that diversity? Um, the, the, the diversity and the complexity in some cases presents very abject uh, conditions, abject characteristics, and we need to get our hands around that. So um, it's important for us to understand the differences between Tokyo and Mexico City and Shanghai and New York uh, and Hume, Croatia, Albany, New York, because of this particular um, finding from the UN Population Fund, that the megacities themselves, which capture a lot of attention, ubiquitous cities, smart cities, megacities, megalopolises, but what we know from them is that the smaller cities and towns is really where the change is gonna be most significant. And this is really important because in many cases, they're the ones with the most abject resource uh, requirements, or resource conditions. And so we spent a lot of time in our early days trying to understand what does it mean to be smart? Um, and we look back over the literature over the last 20 years, looking at how the term smart or smartness has been used. And we, got, we identified a number of different um, ways that this phrase or this term, depending on, uh, on, on, the, on the discipline, has been used. And so SMART tends to mean, um, from a marketing perspective, a user-friendly city, a customized, we're going to have a SMART strategy um, that adapts itself uh, in cases to user needs. Urban planning in the 1990s was sort of a normative claim, right? We're doing SMART growth, right? SMART, uh, smart sprawl. And so these ideas, and then computing science introduced this idea of smart technology, smart homes. If any of you have ever visited Microsoft in, in uh, Redmond you, you, or Disney World, right? there's a smart home and you get to walk in and the house talks to you. 